Hello, it's the Norwegian artist Knut Andrevik Solan. I just finished one of my Patreon giveaway paintings, which is actually the one for February. And uh, I'm a little bit late, you might say. But I'm picking up and I'm gonna give away this painting now to one of my patrons. Uh, and uh, gonna watch me how I do that. You can see the full painting tutorial after this introduction. You have also the one for uh, March and April. And I'm also working with a couple of other things for May and last month and this one month is also coming up. So, and here my patrons are inside this jar. I just cut them up and I just put my hand into this jar or box or whatever you call it, not jar. And I put out Karin Suli as the winner of the February painting. Yeah, Kari Suli. Uh, that was fun, actually, because uh, I think actually a friend of her won another one. Who would have thought? Anyway, um, if you want to be a patron, you can um, uh, follow the link. That is at the end of uh, this uh, long uh, video of the painting process. Uh, it's a link there and in one in the description. And if you want to be eligible to uh, uh, be in this uh, Patreon giveaway lottery, you can join me, my Patreon with $5 a month. And if you just want to see my Patreon only post, you can do a $1 pledge. Uh, if you like my videos and stuff like that and just want to support my channel. So with this, I thank you for watching this video and I hope that you give it a thumbs up leave a comment, tell me what you think, share it with your friends. It's very important also that if you are a subscriber, put the notification bell on so you can actually uh, get notifications every time I post a video. It's really helpful for me because right now it's about 250 of 4,410, which has put the notification bell on. And that is quite sad because I need as many views as I can get. So with this, Stay cool, until next time. Yeah, uh, sorry for the long introduction. I really do to test your faith and patience. But what I want to say now is that in this video, I am actually putting it into segments. So you can, and I'm gonna see if I can find a way to uh, uh, put in links to the segments in the description. Is I also show you how I use the palette in this video. So, um, so that you know that, you can learn something about how to use the palette. So, that was what I wanted to say. And with this, happy watching. Okay, I'm ready to dance again. Uh, just need to focus it a little bit. Like this. Now, I'm going to paint that uh, brick with a coon. Coonsh. Coonsh. Coon. And uh, I'm going to keep this uh, video to the point. I'm not gonna try not to rant too much about life, existence, and everything, but try to keep it on the topic of painting so it will be more interesting. For actually, it was a friend of mine who told me. That I might want to do that. Uh, now, sometimes when I paint, my thoughts are just wandering. They just wander off 
into all kinds of digressions and stuff and uh, that is why I often see myself going deeply into these existentialist rants. Now, <clears throat> I want to have the shadow inside. So this was maybe, I went a little bit too broad. Uh, usually when I paint a brick, I would paint it full size, like one to one or even bigger. This will be basically half the, approximately half the size of a real the one. Uh, because it's a smaller painting. And I also want the reflection to be in to be in it. And you have the kunsh here and there's a kunsh there. Um, small so it's gonna be quite fun, I think. It's Reflected there. Um, this is also one of my patron paintings. A gift to uh, to a patron. It's more kind of a rougher thing. Uh, people usually like my my breaks. I try to get them as real that I can. I always fall into the trap of the impressionist and the expressionist within me. So I always exaggerate the colors. It's very hard for me to keep it down. So uh, <clears throat> it will always be a little bit more vivid than reality. Everything I do is in a one way or another is exaggerated. It can be in the colors, it can be in in the dark, in, the, yeah, in everything actually. In life too, it's, everything is a little bit over the top. Okay, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> I'm gonna make an interview with myself maybe where I talk about these things. I'm gonna make a self-portrait soon. I'm gonna rant about me and my life. And uh, yeah, I'm, I think I want to start with that soon because I'm going into the operations to fix my hips. I have one hip at a time, so I need to finish this self-portrait first in case I die. But now, you see, I start as usual with uh, the light colors. Uh, it is more light on top. The thing is with uh, bricks is that they are all different. They've gone through different processes, different things has happened to them. They're a little bit smashed there and smashed there. Almost not, basically like a piece of driftwood. They have been if they have been used, they have been um, bumped around by the elements for years and they get this personality, almost like an old person where you can see his life and his wrinkles and his, the depth of his eyes. And in a way, I feel that the the bricks has some the same constitution. Is that right to say constitution? Um, there, there. I'm also gonna focus a little bit on the palette in this, and I'm gonna do shorter blips of painting, like maybe ten minutes. Then I will shift to the palette for like maybe five minutes and then back to the painting and then I will go back and forth as I uh, work because you can see how I actually 
of finding the different when I sketch is kind of more rough when it's uh, when it's um, <clears throat> getting more into detail so it all slows down and I go into this deep deep flow which is actually hard for me to show you I'm going to start doing some long sessions of uh, streaming on YouTube then I will probably it's a shame that you can't just pick some music and go the flow like some concerts or something that you always get into this copyrighted stuff uh, that will turn off the sound or totally demonetize your videos or not that I earn so much money on YouTube, but it's nice to maybe get a dollar a day or less. Like usually, it's a half a dollar a day. Some on a good day, I can be on a dollar. A dollar is a dollar. Two or three dollars, and you have a cup of coffee. So yeah, it's not so that bad. Now, as you can see shadow is back here uh, there's a line also but I'm not gonna I'm not sure that I'm gonna paint in the lines maybe I will just let the background kind of fade in to the background um, yeah yeah mm -hmm. Maybe I should do more of these smaller ones because, you know, who knows. I love this because it's so loose and it's free and it's, I like the green and now yellow apple I just painted, the pain I had to get that right compared to the sketching process when everything is new it's almost like a birth you just bring something new into the world and then you have to bring it up and it's a painful process just like when my daughter went from child to teenager <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was a difference um, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna film the palette so you can watch me do that for a while. And I'm gonna go back to to the painting as a whole. There will be a shadow here. I do not understand why people actually line up with charcoal or anything because this is exactly the same thing. I do the scrap the scrabble, I do the drawing, I do and the good thing with this is just it's oil paint, so you can keep on moving it around and you don't have to put anything out or anything, you just let it dry and you work on top of it and you just keep on working with it until it sits where it's supposed to sit so yeah okay now it's exactly 10 minutes okay now usually i have a piece of uh, a piece of uh, over my arm here underneath i have a piece of um, skin, some uh, uh, ox skin to protect, I couldn't find it now, so I usually put the, so what I'm doing when I'm painting now, I just kind of grab the paint, I grab different colors, dip it into this, now in the sketching process, and I just put it on with different colors, now I'm working on the background, so it's dark, Uh, 
actually see how all the difference. You see how my have lined up all the colors. I have the whites here. I have some broken. This is my more as red. This goes against the green, and I just mix them. Here I have the Prussian blue. I have the black. I have the cup lock and the two the, the cadmium and the cadmium and the vermilion. I have. Uh, uh, cadmium orange and I mix that with some cadmium yellow and I have lemon yellow and I have the uh, French ultramarine which I kind of create the darkest color and I have ah I forgot that one I have some dark brown uh, brown raw umber and no no burnt umber and raw umber and here you have um, uh, raw sienna and I burnt sienna I usually also have Rosiana. I'm going to put on more of, the, of that because I forgot. It's not always that I use them that much. And they have kind of dried up a little bit. It's a bit. So. Right up. So I should be more careful. You should be more careful with your tools because you're not washing your your uh, your pencils and making your tubes ready putting the caps on and stuff, it actually costs a lot of money. It will cost you a lot of uh, uh, money in spent color. And it's like not paying your bills in a, basically on time. Sooner or later, they will send you a new bill. That will cost you much more money because you didn't get your ass to do it. Okay, so the kunj, I just mix these, grab them, and since it's a sketch, I just mold on the surface, as you usually see that I'm doing, uh, different colors, different places and you see I dip and I do like this um, I don't mix that much on the canvas itself well I do I mix on the canvas what I mean is that I, I don't mix the colors so much I maybe just grab them do like this I don't mix them like that so, and I just put them on, I grab, almost like clay, I put them on, um, yeah, reddish, you can pull it, the red up and you can pull it down and you can just keep on moving around, finding the right colors, you see. And um, it's a very dynamic process, uh, but I would recommend. You have to have a little bit of, I guess you have to have a little bit of, of um, experience working this way, because I remember when I started out painting, I was there, I mixed everything, I have some old palettes. And I can see how I mix the colors in a totally different way when I didn't know exactly how I was going to make it happen. So it's funny how you get more experience and 
see I just just like playing playing the piano in a way. You just keep moving things around like this. Um, I'm gonna do the one that stays stands on C here. Uh, now I should actually move to show what I'm doing on this. Maybe I should have had a video with two kind of videos, one on the palette and one on the surface or now on the canvas. I have no idea how and that's a problem. I have to teach myself how to make better videos. But you know everything takes time and if I'm gonna make videos that is more instructive somebody have to start paying me <laughs> because I'll become patrons so I can actually spend a little bit more time on that and not just this crude more crude videos I make now um, okay. it's hard to concentrate when I talk so much but I hope that you get the point I'm gonna turn it off I'm gonna switch back to to the sketching process now You can actually see what I'm doing. I just move around and grab colors, and uh, yeah, right now I worked on the more reddish specter. If I work in the background, I might go to the black and to this one to the more reddish to push it down. Okay. So that is basically what I do, and I don't know, but it is almost it is it is like a communication between me and being able to see into the future how it's going to be, uh, and that is what happens when you get better. You actually your intuition starts taking over, and you don't have to so much to get things right uh, well <laughs> of course I have to stress to get things right you see I just do like this that is how my medium actually gets into the paint I usually don't mix it might dip it a little bit but that is also in the beginning usually it's just It just gets into the paint by me using the medium as a way to clean or get some paint out of my pencils and then by accident it comes in to the paint yay and you wanna you actually wanna paint as dry as possible because you don't want your paintings to crack up after two years okay that was also 10 minutes I hope it was up. okay my fellow human beings my fellow chimpanzees no we are not chimpanzees we are not descended from chimpanzees we have a common ancestor did you know that we genetically, in theory, can still get babies with chimpanzees? Well, so to say, there's a bigger likeness between genetically similarity between a chimpanzee and a human than a horse and a donkey. And they can have a mule. 
So that's something to think about. Anyway, you see now how I'm building. Um, yeah. So my palette. So now when I use the red now, now it's dark. I just go in like this, and I just bring it up because. I put some more reddish into the dark and I bring it up and I can take some white and bring it more up and I let the brush strokes basically uh, just explain everything now I'm gonna do some more in the foreground it's gonna be a little bit crude sketch uh, and then I'm gonna take a little break because I need to start up my um, I need to do something with the battery I should also get more batteries for my camera uh, I'm gonna try to get the when I do my hip surgery I hope that they can actually film the operation so I can make a video of my operations and uh, operations actually I probably have to do two uh, and the recovery process the training and uh, the pain and the day after and everything so it could be fun for you uh, I have big hopes for my hip replacement actually now I'm training a lot of squats lately and uh, the pain is actually going away so it's kind of puzzling anyway back to painting 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 uh, <laughs> you see it's quite hard for me to stay on topic because my brain just keeps wondering uh, it is because I have some ADHD and um, painting and that is if you have the diagnosis ADHD don't think it's a disease because it isn't it's just your brain that is not like an average brain it just lack a little bit of uh, dopamine in the uh, usually people are more balanced in their dopamine levels uh, people who have a little bit of ADHD or have ADHD tend to have less dopamine so we kind of increase the activity and that will of course turn out bad because bad activity also becomes just as intense as positive identity uh, no, um, uh, not identity but positive um, uh, uh, activity of course activity uh, so if you can if you have a kid that isn't good at sitting still at school or is bored or stuff like that try to get them into training preferably martial arts training where they can actually learn some Real skills. Uh, try to get them into uh, some creative stuff. Because what happens? What happened to my brain when I started painting? It was like coming home. It was only my mom. I'm home. Uh, before that, I used to be a welder in a shipyard, and I remember I welded made with both my hands because I can also write with both my hands. Uh, I I have a, some dyslexia, so I can't even. Um, as I say, I have two two handwritings, but I write basically wrong with both of them. But then again, I could weld with both hands. I can shoot with both hands. I can't throw rocks with both hands, so I'm a little bit dominant with my right. Um, but when I was a welder, 
I didn't like not having anything to do. That could actually drive me nuts. And uh, that made me a good worker. I had a reputation of being a good worker. And uh, that's good. Got more overtime and stuff. But then I get some, got some allergy against the smoke. And I just start doing this instead. But the point is that the, the so-called ADHD gets more, it gets very relaxed. The painting turns off my brain in the areas that is most hyperactive when I don't have anything to do. And it feels great. It is total flow. Uh, so that was actually one of the reasons I fell so deeply in love with painting and drawing, actually, especially painting the first time I did it, because it really centered me in a way that nothing else does. You know, you, can, you can't have, well, I would try probably, you can have sex for eight hours in a row, you know, Go you're gonna be pretty exhausted after that, and uh, you can't train hard or dance for 10 or 12 hours. But I can do this for 12 hours, and I will just be more and more energized because of my brain relaxes and it just tones down to the zen like place where I just feel great and I take it with me to the next day and the next day after that. And that's why the painting process is basically a lifesaver in a way. Because I couldn't do nothing. It is <laughs> it is if I should have a vacation to last more than one week where I couldn't do anything creative I just go nuts I can I can stick around for a week go somewhere a little bit over a week but after that I really get bored and I need to start doing something and if I can't do something I will just fall into start watching movies or TV series or doing all kinds of shit stupid shit instead because I can't calm down the brain, or I will start training too much, or other, other distractions that is just not good. That is just negative, negative, negative. So this painting stuff for the hyperactive brain is just wonderful. So there you have the kunsch. Huh. Yeah, while well, I'm talking about ADHD. And I wasn't supposed to do that because I was going to talk about painting. But as I say, my brain wanders off. But you see what I'm doing? I'm just playing the color. I'm just kind of letting myself go, seeing, um, I mean, I mean this dialogue with myself and it's just wonderful. There was a time for a while ago where I really was depressed and I, I couldn't really get into the flow and I, had problems with it getting started. It was not painful, but it was the emptiness of not doing anything, not reaching into this, tap into this beautiful thing. It's just painful. 
I do not understand people who doesn't spend their time doing something this creative. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to charge the batteries and I'm going to keep on painting. Remember, I'm not doing a perfect rendition of what I'm seeing, especially not when I'm sketching. I'm just doing a approximate um, rendition or gazelle of it, and then I start after that and adjust, adjust, adjust. So, a little break, and then I'll come back to the sketch. Okay. So, my thought I was just going to go a little bit closer so you can actually see more what I'm doing. Uh, as I say, it is just a crude sketch yet. You see, I'm just going to put in the basis colors, the thick layers in the light areas. Now there is a lot of things that I will change. I see that this is higher uh, compared to this. I have to see the lines and uh, this one is bigger. I think the coon is a little bigger. Coon and uh, yeah that is what is all frustrating with paintings like this. You will always do mistakes if you don't use a um, projector, which some cheating artists are actually doing. It's almost like vegans eating meat uh, and telling you that they don't. I don't know. That's not correct. Well, it's correct if you actually use a projector and you don't tell people you do. But, I mean, a trained eye will probably see that anyway because the brain has a hard time doing everything perfect. You have to become extremely good to draw to get everything probably right if it is on freehand. I do know about a few, I mean, but it is actually difficult. And I don't know if it, even if it is desired because maybe some of the dynamic and some of the beauty might get a little bit lost in that process. To move that screen a bit actually. It's more up there. <clears throat> so I painted it wrong and I just I didn't paint it again, I just moved the couch. <laughs> Maybe that was cheating. As they say you're gonna make the painting look more like the model. And I made the model now look more like the painting, so I went the opposite way. It's only an object, so it's actually possible. You can't rearrange a face, so that has to be totally perfect, not uh, as good as possible anyway, before you can even hope to. To make it the painting look like a model. So. so so a little bit more like this. 
It's funny because that is not possible to build a painting in one go. I used to do these sketches. That was extremely nice. But now I just try to almost take a lump of clay, almost like I have a lump of clay, and I just try to kind of make it into that basis shape before I'm going to move on and try to create the substance of the sculpture. <clears throat> I'm glad it's not growing. I painted so many growing things lately. The still lives, the onion, onions who are growing, the onion that died while I was painting it, and now I'm painting another onion while I'm, which also is growing, and the apple that changed color. So right now I'm just happy to create something that is already dead. So it doesn't change too much. It doesn't change at all, basically. So I can actually focus more on the shape than the frustration of seeing my painting or the motif change in front of my eyes because it's, to me, it's just Horrible experience. Horror. Okay. Feeling happy today. I've been painting a lot. And as I say, the painting makes me happy. Period. My mother always tell me, Oh, you work too hard and blah, blah, blah. And I tell her, no, that's not the problem. It's not the work that is hard. It is not getting it done. That is the hard part. Seeing your time just disappear in a puff of <sighs> second law of thermodynamic without anything actually happening. So that is the horrible part of these distractions. But when I'm focused, I'm really focused and I'm really feeling happy. And I just turn off all the noise and I start creating stuff. And it's funny, you never get tired of it. I think it's almost like sex. You, you don't really get tired of it. If it's good sex, of course, with the right woman. And I guess the painting for me is constant sex with the right woman. Sometimes it's more demanding than other times, but in a way, it's the woman I love. So, yeah, I think that's a good analogy, analogy, whatever you call it. <coughs> Now I need to move. Um, the coons should always have this, the same kind of shape because, as I say, the the laws of nature creates all these shapes from the same uh, mathematical rules. Wherever you see in the universe, you see the same shapes. You see it in a gas clouds, you see big gas clouds where the stellar nurseries where the stars are born and you see it in the sky and you see it in a kunj and you see it in waves and you see it in rocks and driftwood and, uh, and um, brick and you see these rules riverbeds and how the trees grow and how our brains are Put together in the same way that how the neurons and the synapses is growing in the same way as um, in the same way as uh, 
trees actually and veins in our bodies. It's unbelievable. That's why I love science by the way because it's so it explains everything and you can relate it to to everything you see around you. When you know these things it's like it's much more easy to see them to okay this can't be right because it goes against the laws of nature I mean if you if you paint something that isn't symmetric or doesn't have the right end say that you are painting a tree and you are doing the branches and you're just putting in some branches that would look ridiculous because all the branches of a tree is growing in the golden snit, as we call it in Norway, or, or uh, they always grow in the same mathematical uh, way. No matter how big they are or small they are. So, it's easy to spot a painting of a tree that is actually where the painter has understood the tree or observed the tree in the right way compared to an artist that hasn't done that and just paint symbols. Um, actually in the diaries of, uh, of uh, Leonardo da Vinci he is referring to uh, how nature created the shapes. So he doesn't even refer to God. He was probably not a religious man. And um, he just refers to some structure he could see being repeated in nature. And that was actually before they had the uh, Prime of Rock um, mathematics or the mathematics of chaos, repetition. The snowflakes are all, always different, uh, stuff like that. So I don't remember the mathematics right now. But I should actually listen to some of these videos again, or these lectures, because it's always better to have a conversation about these things when you are more updated on the facts and stuff, so, yeah. I bring science into the painting without being bugged down with it, you know, it's not like I am so scientific that it kind of keeps me down in any way, but I, it not keeps me down but makes me into a neurotic, you know, that I can't set myself free and just go where the dice flows anyway this is ridiculous it's starting to fuck up so okay that's better okay this kunch kun kinch kunch when I was painting the apple on um, this glass surface it really drove me insane because I just couldn't get it right I just and it kept I felt it kept changing you can't have changed that much but that was what I felt so as I say this is more liberating And it's also down here. And the goosh comes up there. I was actually, I was planning having one in the front also. And I might put in a small one later, but I'm not sure. I sometimes, you know, you put in one more object and you kind of just kill the whole thing. And I, I am a sucker for single objects. I have some big still lifes I'm actually going to paint. 
I have a bare cranium, I have this some some stuff like that, but I usually I I just like to paint one object, one real study. I drew in the kunch here. Uh, for two reasons actually. It is smaller than reality. And I felt this is a this is a patron painting. And I also want uh, people who win it. Maybe that makes me into a compromise. Well I kinda want people to get more than than a break. The brick is difficult not enough in itself, but you know, I want people to feel they got a little bit more for their money. So, um, I drew in a goosh. Also, of aesthetic reasons. It makes it much harder, too, because Painting the brick, that's yeah, quite difficult. But painting this kunj makes it much more difficult. It has to be the right size. Now I just found out that the line goes in there. And that means that I have to revisit this and put it up there. And then I have to put this one up there. And I have to take this higher. And that is basically what's going on. See, I keep moving stuff. And I also, when I was going to do this, I could actually see that uh, there was something wrong down here. So I needed to get these two to at least communicate a little bit. I think my English is getting better. From doing these YouTube videos, I'm not schooled in English. I just learn it through movies, speaking, and I had a, and I do always had this kind of perfect rhythm pitch. Not perfect. I don't know how how it's perfect. I don't really know what perfect is, but. The point is that I you always used to or been able to pick up rhythms. I became good in kawata, pomsa, kata, martial arts in general. I always loved to dance. The girls always thought I was a dancer when I was out in dancing. Before I got my fucking atreides, which I'm gonna get rid of. And um, and I always also were able to pick up languages very easy. <coughs> and uh, there always been a blessing from Odin. <laughs> uh, if you listen to um, Jens Stoltenberg, he's the Norwegian NATO leader. He's good in grammar, he's good in English, but if you hear how he pronounces the words, that is actually how most Norwegians are speaking English. They are speaking English in a, in a very strange accent. It's almost like they are talking Norwegian when they are speaking English, and it sounds really strange. I have no idea how I sound, but I've listened to my own voice. It's not, I don't like to listen to my own voice. I don't think many people actually like that. I think it's strange. It's very, it's kind of, um, it's kind of, it's almost like it's not me. But I can hear that my pronouncements of the words are quite okay. 
It's not bad. So, I'm not embarrassed by my English. I think it's quite probably quite limited. I do not have a big vocabulary. <laughs> That's a very difficult word to, word to say. But I'm, I'm working on it. I'm trying to start, uh, not trying. I'm actually trying to read, oh, let's try again. Uh, read uh, books in English it's because I'm a visual, quite visual, and I learn visually and actually by listening. I'm not uh, that good at reading, but I can actually remember how words look. So if I can um, teach myself to read a lot of English when I am out of words, I can actually stop and I can visualize the word in my head uh, and I can see it and then I can say it. So, yeah, that is why I should, among other things, read more English. And of course, it's make, make my spelling better when I'm writing. Um, it's so funny when I've been <laughs> discussing politics or religion or whatever on the internet in English and people are losing the argument because they really are ignorant compared to the facts. You should always and that's important if you're coming to a discussion and you notice that you don't know enough, just admit it. You shouldn't be wrong longer than you have to. Um, but they always start to, if it's written or you know, writing, when they're out of arguments, they attack my spelling and I just say well I'm dyslexic and I think it's right that you attack my handicap and <laughs> they just go so silent because nobody wants to attack a handicap and so funny I don't really care I don't give a shit you know if people start arguing and telling you you're stupid because you can't spell. I mean, there's a lot of highly intelligent people in the world that can't spell. Probably some of the most intelligent people who ever lived wasn't good at spelling because they did have some ADHD and dyslexia and stuff like that. So Now I'm way off topic again way off topic. I am painting and I am ranting. But the sketch is magically becoming something. <laughs> magically. It's not magic. Jesus. Anyway, um, see what I'm doing anyway. See how. Okay. This is very diluted, so it doesn't matter how that is right now. I'm going to paint a little bit more on it. Maybe on the palette and then back on this. And then I will call the sketch quits. Okay. Oh, 23 minutes. And you couldn't even see the cooch. There it is. 
Sorry, didn't remember that I had been sewing on it. So now we can actually see how that came out. Funny how the eyes just don't pick this up, but just put it in there. Yeah, I have to finish a big figure painting now in the next days, or I will be sadly out of money. And that can't happen. A lot of unfinished commission work to finish. Yeah. Okay. Let's we'll see how how it comes along. I think I would just do a little bit more palette focusing so you can actually see what I'm doing. You see it's starting to become a little bit more messy now and that's okay. Uh, when you sketch that isn't such a big problem. Uh, when you get into, actually it can be a good thing because you get some more of different colors into the paint. You see it's quite messy. But I I do like this, just take it off. Then I, as I say, I go in, find the colors I need, just lighten them up, grab some, grab them. And that's a good thing with um, with these bristles or this boar bristles made out of pig, pigs here, I um, don't remember the name right now, that the colors are falling into the, to the different hairs and you can actually mix the colors in the, the say that you are going to have a orange or yellowish reddish thing you can do like this and just grab and you can grab and then you can when you put it on the canvas it will just mix on the canvas or they glide into one another and almost create a rainbow effect you know <clears throat> yeah it's not something I think about when I do it, it is automatic now. Uh, it used to be more. Um, I used to be more static when I. But as you evolve as a painter, it would become more and more easy to do it. And I said that before, so. I guess I probably don't need to repeat it. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. I have put out a lot of painting on this canvas now, so it kind of becomes more difficult to add more. I will just give it some some textures and um, yeah Big 
good. Well, I should actually show you, maybe show you what I'm doing on the canvas. Canvas. The canvas. Um, see? I do mix a little bit, but you see, I don't kind of get into some kind of messy shit. I try to just grab a little bit. Bam, 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 bam. And then I, then I do brush strokes. And, yeah. very good that the glass, the reflection in the glass is very different in color and nuance. That is what I, I used to often use a mirror, but that becomes too clear. It has its own thing, but it becomes so clear that it's actually, becomes a little bit too vivid maybe. Even for me, yeah. See, boom, boom, boom. As I say, usually I have this skin thing, which I, for some reason, can't find. <laughs> so annoying. The dark areas, I just grab it like this. Have some black in it. Grab more. Maybe fill it in with this. I do not touch much of the. As you can see. Right now, I haven't touched much of the um, the brown. You might find that strange, and this is the um, um, the dark brown. You see, there I had to go into my brain, and I had to picture the tube and the name. Because I couldn't pull it out, so I had to see. <laughs> anyway, that's all. I had to see the yeah. It's like how is stop written? Okay, that's of course it's easy. And then I just see a picture a stop sign. I see a stop sign in my head, and then I see the number. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. So, okay, I'm going to go back to, uh, I will fill more. And even in the end, when I'm doing detail work, I will have a very more clear, cleaner palette and I will do detail and you, you see how it slows down, how it becomes less and less chaotic. Now it doesn't matter, I can just mix some colors, build some textures and I just add textures and I let it dry and then it gives me that surface to work with. You can also go in with um, with the gesso and build textures before you actually start using any color. If you know you're gonna have a lot of texture someplace in a, in a canvas, it can actually give you a good start and also save you some expensive paint. Okay, I'll just do a little bit more. So you can see what I'm doing. Now I might go a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of things happening in this because the wood in the background comes up here and then you can see the wood go down like this. And there is this line in the wood here. And it goes through here. And um, goes behind here and all of this gives it a quite nice composition this one and this one 
kind of, mm, I'm not sure if it falls this way or that way, but that shadow can be enough to bring it over to this side. So I'll do that. Um, it's hard for me to get more paint into it now because it just turns into a mess. I can try to build a little bit more texture in the areas that I know is going to be very white. Uh, like here and here, I guess. This one is going inside punch. <clears throat> it's funny, it's almost like I'm talking to someone. And that is you. I'm talking to you, sir, or ma'am, or girl, or sweetheart, Mr. Warrior, Mr. Man, whatever. Um, and I'm getting used to it. I can actually picture there being a person. And maybe that is why some have commented that it's actually like I'm in the room when they listen and when they paint. And I like the thought of that, to be part of people's lives, people I don't know. That my videos can actually, I know people have been inspired. I'm not the best painter in the world by a long shot, but at least I'm real. I don't pretend. I'm a very honest person. I'm actually a kind person too, believe it or not. Though I can be quite rude also because I have that kind of personality. As today, I can give you an example. I I am doing this Patreon thing, and there was this girl, woman, has been a Facebook friend of me for years, and I asked her if she wanted to be a five dollar patron. She always told me she liked my paintings and stuff. And first she didn't answer at all, which really pisses me off. Because, tell me no, it's okay, just don't ignore me. I hate being ignored, the worst thing. I can't stand it, actually. That is why I try not to ignore anyone. If I don't answer a message, it is really by accident. But when you see people I've seen, I've actually seen... And you send them one more and ask if they could please answer, and they do not answer. And then in the end they do if you send a question mark or something like that. And then I get this thing, oh no I can't afford it because I am on, uh, you know in Norway we have this uh, you can't work because you are sick. But the fact is that way too many Norwegians are have this benefits and cost society way too much money and this woman has a picture of herself on skiing on mountains and everything and she complains that she just had this this um, benefits of the state and she can't afford five dollars a month which is 42 kuna and I just say well it's funny that you have this since you are you look like a mountain goat you climb mountains and you have and you can't work <laughs> I just couldn't help myself because first of all I don't care about her private economy I don't need to know it. I don't. Uh, I don't believe in it. I mean, if you are a drug addict in Norway, you can afford most things because you are basically born in the middle of a cake. Norway is extremely rich country because of oil, 
and um, even people on welfare do have quite a bit of money. And of course, it's I can see that it's rude of me to say that, but I specifically told her that I didn't need any reason. I just wanted a yes or no. But then I have to start this rampage about their private economy and how bad their lives are and stuff like that. And I just can't help myself. I just have to go into the rabbit hole and dig my own grave. I could be polite and say, oh, that's fine. I'm sorry for you and bloody body body. But if you can climb a fucking mountain and you can use makeup, you can party, you can do everything, you can work, okay? There is no excuse not to work. And that is my opinion. Uh, so of course you got pissed off. So that is how I can be if if I'm in a bad mood. I don't really mean to be nasty. What do you make it too obvious and too easy not to say it? And I feel a little bit bad after it too because you know. It is better to be nice, right? Maybe, maybe not. It's just a bullshit, you know? Oh, yeah, so, that's me. And, um, and honestly, 42 kronor in Norway is nothing. Five dollars in Norway, that is a cup of coffee. It is a half a beer half a drink, it is nothing, okay, nothing, that is why I only ask that, I have people on Facebook that are from Venezuela and poor countries and stuff, and they tell me their situation, and I empathize with that, I don't have to sign up, but if you're from Norway, and you complain about your economy, Please, don't do that. Say you don't want to, because that is actually the truth. Tell me the tr fucking truth. I love the truth. Truth is liberating. Just say no. Ah, it's not my thing. Then I say, ah, okay, that's fine. And then you move on. So, that was also a digression while I'm painting. to tell you how I am as a person, how I sometimes shoot myself in the foot, but that's how I am. So. Yeah. See now? Yeah, I wish I could work on this but I can't because now you see that the, the color is just starting to melt in and in the end it's just gonna turn to a mush and that was some person told me on Facebook that she couldn't get the colors on the, on the, the room and uh, the colors clean and the room kind of depth and stuff and that is because they don't understand to build textures and you also have to try to understand the different textures of the object yeah so that's the secret anyway that's the sketch in real time. Real time sketch. So, until next time. Okay. 
a little bit of lazur and then we are on our way again with this I haven't painted it for a while well, actually doing it now so I put on the Petuchia furnace uh, earlier has dried so that will maybe give it a more slippery surface. Oh, I'm gonna try to not make that into a problem. This is basically the second layer. So yeah. That's what I do. I take away some of the oil so it's not so oily and I start painting. Find a good, uh, a good pencil. It's important. Yes. There we go. I'm working with these small ones now. <clears throat> now, I, as you know, I always start with the bright areas. That is uh, most easy for me. And uh, that's what I'm going to do now. Just going to enhance the sculptural, sculptural dimension. Keep on that. And there's a lot of textures in this, but I also have this is a quite this is an ordinary brick, and I have um, um, decreased the size of it. I kind of it's half size, I guess, something like that. I thought that one might be a little bit interesting. As you see, I just, it is kind of quite horrible because I just paint right over the nice textures. But the thing is, they are lying under there. Uh, and they are kind of sending their presence through the paint. And, uh, yeah. So the more over paint you do, the more sculptural it gets. So yeah. Uh, maybe I should just stop making videos. I kind of keep repeating myself. I mean if you haven't understood it by now, <laughs> you're never gonna understand it. I think I need to get my eyes checked because I want that when I stand here it's kind of blurry. It's so annoying because when I see my still life is totally clear and move out here it starts to become clear but I can stand painting like this and I guess I'm getting old so I have to do like this and this uh, probably getting old my eyes are falling apart that's a sad fact but I think maybe I'm gonna check if there is possible to correct it with an operation but then again, operating on one's eyes are uh, kind of, uh, you know, 
my eyesight is very very important to me I guess it's very important to everyone and losing your sight is probably the worst thing that could possibly happen I couldn't see all the beautiful girls anymore I couldn't do the thing you know sitting in cafes seeing people pass by see the sunsets that would be horrible I can't understand how people can't actually survive a loss like that but they do and I guess so would I so so what we can do and I guess in a few years we'll probably get eyes that are made of silicon and uh, or even new eyes made by from the bottom up and petri dishes and uh, get new ones so you can see all the gamma waves and infrared and night vision and all <laughs> that would be fun or maybe artificial eyes that can see all the specters anyway digression see now I'll start building it already looks like a brick isn't that annoying and there are people who stops on this level and it's cheating I think I think it's cheating I want things to have substance I want things to be Rembrandt-esque. Rembrandt. There's also a patron giveaway. I should have finished quite a long time ago it's actually the I think it's the I have to check it out is it the January February no it's not the January it's the, maybe the February so I have one two more and do my patron giveaway lottery and I need to get ahead with everything I had my hip replacement and it took more time than I thought finishing these paintings because I couldn't actually I could walk and I could stand but I couldn't stand over a long period of time because the fluids from the wounds kept flowing down into my leg and it swelled up like crazy and um, I had to stop and take better care about myself so Giving 
Somos una arcana. Like the fingerprint, yeah, they're all different. Let's kind of interesting. actually filming my palettes in between here so I think I'm gonna do the next segment and fill in my palette and show you how I mix my colors some people have asked if I could actually have one camera on my palette and one on my objects and then of course also have one on the object so they could see what I was was painting while well, I was painting it but at this point I don't earn any money on this basically so I'm not going to buy a lot of equipment until people start until I get more patrons and can actually basically make a living out of this YouTube channel uh, that's when I will start adding in more because takes time and effort to make these videos and these paintings believe it or not hmm. the same You know, everything is about correction, correcting, correcting, correcting. So that is why I always start with these very crude sketches. So. I'm not afraid to put on paints. Put it that way, and you shouldn't. You should try to have the painting to have some address. That's not just put on. Oh, I'm going to make a lot of texture now, and you just push a lot of paint into it that doesn't have any address. I also see that people do that, and uh, that is not the point point is to get the, the texture to have address to have a in a way to have a purpose when you add it if not it's just pointless babble I call it babble so don't do that Mixing a little bit on my palette right now, especially the whites. There's a blue line there. If you get smaller glasses, so I can actually go from the object to the paint without. Not my head so much. Okay. I 
usually when I do the darkest parts of it, I use my cut black, black and French ultramarine to get the deepest tones. It's quite effective. You don't want to put on black only because it just becomes a hole with no uh, life in it. So you want to add in some color. Actually in the beginning when I was painting, I, I refused using black at all. Since black isn't a part of, I mean absolute black is basically impossible to find anywhere. Um, or absence of light is basically impossible to find. So, well, in our realm anyway. Of course you can create a totally dark room and stuff like that, but you can't paint in a dark room, so unless you're a conceptualist and think painting in a dark room makes you into a genius which it doesn't in my opinion sorry to say but I do not understand a blind painter I can understand a blind sculptor because then you can feel the clay and you can feel the face and you can feel the shape but you can't feel that surface maybe if you do totally abstract works but then again what about the colors you don't see them so you can't know what you're mixing um, so that's just silly the blind painter Push this down a little bit because I want it to be the highest areas I want to be here because uh, you create that physical room by building the painting as you would build a sculpture or a relief actually I like a relief that's how you build it how I build it anyway I wish I knew these things in the start that somebody actually told me these things because it's so logical but nobody told me, I just had to figure out everything myself and uh, it's probably a good thing well saying nobody told me is actually not correct because you do have the classics and you do have all the shoulders or every painter or scientist are standing on so when you as a painter actually are painting and looking at paintings to learn you are actually learning from someone and so do scientists who do physics and stuff like that i mean if you had no knowledge no history of knowledge we would probably still if you had to restart everything, every generation, you would still have cave paintings and uh, basically no signs. You have to stand on the shoulders of giants, as the saying. So, 
And I guess my giant is Rembrandt, it's Vermeer, it's uh, Turner, it's Delacroix, it's um, the best part of Edvard Munch's production, it is Vincent van Gogh and his incredible textures. It is even music like Rachmaninoff and Beethoven and all the people who tell you through, through history, through their work, how to create so yeah I guess I did learn from somebody I'm not somebody living well maybe old Nato the Norwegian painter I was kind of a hero when I was young, still is in a way, uh, but I, because of his, uh, the way he used color, he never became the thing I went to, well in the beginning a little bit, it's not really the thing I go to to learn and it is more the classics. I would go to. When it comes to his textures and the way he uses uh, a texture and uh, the way he treats paint, not the colors though, I don't like his colors, but the way he molds paints are oh, still really beautiful. So. It's more messy now, but it is beautiful. You can see his passion for painting transformed into his work. There's no doubt about that. So, yeah, uh, you should check it out. It's the Norwegian artist Odd, like an odd, like an odd person. Odd Nadlund, Nadlund. Norwegian figurative artist. He used to be, maybe even still are, at a gallery in New York. I think it's the Booth Gallery and Forum Gallery in New York. And this work is quite cool, quite beautiful. Even despite that I don't really like his colors, the way he doesn't use much color in his artwork. I like things to be more uh, natural. I like things to be more like the like the um, impressionist. It's kind of a mix between the impressionists and uh, Rembrandt and Vermeer, maybe. Why do I say maybe? I don't know why I say maybe. So, that is what my goal. Uh, and my objective standard. It's very important to have an objective standard. Especially in art. Where people are so smug and so full of themselves. So uh, you can sometimes think that they took all the most narcissistic people nature created and uh, throw them into the art world. <laughs> That's sometimes the feeling I get when I hear artists talk. Not all of them, of course. You have to keep it open, so I have to say that, not all of them, so everyone can think they are an exception. <laughs> no, that would be cheating. There are exceptions, there are great things. I know, actually know personally a couple of ones, at least one that is a totally, total. No, I know more than one, I know, no, at least five or six or seven. I don't know. 
I know know of you who are real. So and I'm not much in the art world anyway, so it's just my impression of the I went to art school and I experienced all the vitriol because I want to paint like this. Uh, always been a strange art debate in Norway about what is art, is painting figurative, even art, all that shit. It's a very Norwegian debate because it's a small country and much of the money to art comes from the state. Many artists actually live, get their money from the state. And uh, there is no real competition. And I wish that there were more. The law of the jungle may the person who works his ass off win. Not the ones that can actually just talk to talk. Are narcissistic enough to believe that everything I do is amazing. Okay, I'm going to turn off this camera and keep working. That was a half an hour. Yay, here we are. Another day, another layer. And I will just put on some lazur as I usually do. I'm back in ketosis, and that feels great. All the painkillers after my operation is out of my system. I actually have no paint today, I don't know why. So, that's good. Anyway, let's see what I do. I need to start finishing my Patreon uh, giveaway paintings. Uh, I'm, I'm behind now way too much because of my operation and the restitution time and everything. And it shouldn't be like that. I should be able to plan better. But then again, life and this happens. You see now it's turned down and I get some uh, something to work with. It's going to be nice now because I'm going to go into deeper detail. And uh, yeah. Need some. Hey, where did I put my pencils? Yeah, that was smart. Let me see if I put my pencils. Oh. Isn't that strange? I just had them in my hand. And now they're gone. Yeah, well, I guess I just need to pick up some other pencils. Because I'm going to start quite slow anyway. <coughs> How did I put them? Gee. Isn't that strange? Anyway, uh, as usual, I will start with the light areas. The problem is that I have to do it like this now. Uh, 
It's funny how my eyesight actually is affected by uh, by how much sugar I. Uh, if you eat a lot of sugar, it affects your central nervous system. Uh, alcohol does that. That is why, as an artist, you should be careful with too much drinking. Uh, if you paint like this, anyway, I mean, if you're an uh, extra abstract expressionist, I guess it doesn't matter because you're not, you don't really use your brain on a on a. high level anyway, you know, the deeper you go into detail, it's like when you play chess, the best chess players play chess, they aren't playing, when they play the deep chess, they, it takes time, and their brains are kind of boiling in a way, they are using so much brain power, and if you have alcohol in your system, or you have been drinking maybe two days before, three days before, maybe even a week, you won't be able to use your brain, and you will probably lose the game. And it's the same thing with painting on the advanced level. Uh, can't really use your brain if you are hungover or you have a blood sugar that varies a lot. So be careful with your diet and uh, stay away from sugar. The best thing is to stay in ketosis, in fat burning mode and force the body to do what it's supposed to do burn fat, not carbs then you will get this very fluid uh, feeling very clear feeling like I have now and uh, you, you feel you don't even need to sleep because you're so alert and it's a great feeling Yeah, so, now you know, be careful with drink. I drank away a lot of years on my career. I guess I was hungover for about, well, I'm the kind of type of person who become hungover for days, not the day after actually that much, that the day after I've been drinking, I just feel kind of flatlined and feel calm. But then, the days after that again, I start to break down because I have not more dopamine in my brain and um, I just go into this horrible feel, empty feeling. And that is when I can't really get anything done. And I start doing all kinds of mistakes, like eating too much, watching too much porn, um, TV series, or any any distraction uh, that can give a short burst of dopamine. Uh, it's a sad thing actually because when it comes down to it, it is the painting, the painting that really gives me a sense of of life and meaning and existence. So, so for the next thirty years, I'm gonna work with my focus and get the most out of this 
the rest of the life I have. And I'm going to remove distractions from my life, which can be things like wrong kind of type of friends, wrong kind of mistresses, don't have any half-baked relationships with anyone, especially if they are needy, because it takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, yeah, just focus on painting, focus on life, on career. I don't like that word, career. That's what I want to focus on. Yeah. Now you see uh, the colors are now kind of mixed into. Yeah, mixed in here. And the paint that was kind of in the lasseur. It's kind of being added on the surface and gradually becomes a part of the new paint I put on. So also get some kind of a fluid feeling. Uh, yeah. And then I start working over that again. And that's how I do it. And I guess you have seen me now many times for the ones of you that are regular on my channel. So yeah. Let's see I need to, okay. I think I'm gonna maybe I should paint a little bit more ten minutes. Okay, I'll give give some time to my um, palette also. Yeah. Okay, here we are. Now I was thinking that you could actually, uh, in this painting I want to also show you a little bit how I use my palette. Uh, as you can see, this it's all the colors of the rainbow. And uh, usually I, I don't use that many of them at the same time. I mix different. The reason why I have like different yellows is because I don't want to use so much time like I used to in the beginning to blend colors before I um, before I um, uh, I start painting so I like to have some some yellows and some different reds and different blues so I can just kind of mix faster. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, also sometimes I use ochre, sometimes I also use the, this um, raw sienna and burnt sienna. Uh, it's the black one there. You see it's quite dirty now. Oh, yeah, I should have some new color in there soon, I can see, but it doesn't really matter right now, I'm just going to tone down, tone up some colors here, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. Anyway, I'm going to work a little bit with a, with a brick, and you see that I go from, how I go from uh, I'm trying to, try to bring up, up the light areas. You see, you shouldn't use white alone. If you only use white, it is not really, it's not really a color. And it doesn't act, if you only put on white, it is like putting on black. It's kind of, it kind of dies in a way. It's, it's, I see people 
painting clouds with only white and uh, <laughs> excuse me of course light will add some color to the white uh, but it will it will seem empty uh, yeah so you have to mix colors into to it. The same thing with, with black. You have to have some colors in some blue, some ultra French ultramarine or something into the and you can kind of use some red and ultramarine to mix into it and, and you get some kind of uh, a more I'll just say it, a more um, a darkness that isn't empty. It's funny because it is hard in the beginning because we all have the same skill wall. I, I've never seen a single person starting to paint and seeing him jumping over the same hurdles that everybody else does. It is the same, that's, that is why I so disagree when people say that humans are so different. Because you are not different. You are not different. We are on average the same. But we are experiencing it subjectively. Uh, and if we know that, that is when you can actually really start learning from others because you can reflect your own mistakes in other people's mistakes or the way they correct them or solve problems. Uh, so that is also why it's so important to understand the textures and, and these things of Rembrandt and the great masters because when you look at how, when you understand how they actually solve the great problems, you will start to understand your own mistakes in a much better way. And when you understand it, you have kind of a map uh, to to work with you, you. You have a road. You don't really know how to walk this road yet, and you have to practice a lot. But you know where you want to go. You won't know, in a way, how they saw things. You know. Well, I'm conscious now when I'm working, so it is a little bit more. When I when I work when I'm. You're not when you're not looking, and I'm not talking. It is more fluid. I just want to point that out because if I worked this in this way, it would take ages to uh, to finish one painting. Uh, I'm much more. It's like. When I'm talking, it's like I'm playing one note at a time. And when I'm in flow, playing music or, or in deep flow, it's like I'm playing the whole orchestra at the same time. And that is why it's so, also feels so great to be working with this over time. I am wondering if I'm going to start doing some live streaming. Maybe have 10 hour sessions or 8 hour sessions where I just stand around and paint. And I can actually just put them on YouTube. And I will try to go into that flow. The problem is that I can't play music because of copyright stuff and all. That is so sad, really, because it would make everything so much easier. We even make it easier to create videos because 
I um, didn't have to talk all the time or entertain you. Maybe I should just shut the fuck up and just paint and you can put on your own music. And uh, yeah. Working with um, reflection and um, stuff. Also the shape of the the brick. And always a problem to see how how the end. You know the line that crosses over to the background. It's always a problem. Um, I'm gonna make a video and just show you how I set up my palette. Also gonna show you a book I have of all the palettes of uh, um, Delacroix. I have actually a book that Delacroix made where he describes all his palettes uh, almost like a menu to every painting he made because he was working in a different way. He was, he was actually planning his paintings for days and weeks and he mixed colors and hung them on kind of pieces of paper around his or put them on pieces of paper around his studio and then he had the painting time where he worked up all this worked up the whole painting. Now he was working much more impressionist than I do so for me that is not a way to go really but I would like to test and maybe even make a whole series of paintings from all his different palettes and um, to see what happens. Uh, some of the palettes have almost no colors at all and some of them have so many that you you feel like you would drown. And then you just, I thought I was going to look at the different paintings and see what kind of kind of hue and stuff they were in and maybe trying to replicate some of his colors in the paintings or the motifs I'm going to paint so I can actually work with the same colors and that would be my Delacroix ser series and I think that could be quite interesting you can tell me what you think in in description and I will probably do that. I, I, I think I'm gonna start actually I'm always been the kind of person who who gathers things. I like to find things and stuff and what do you call it when you when you um, Collector, yeah. I've always been a collector. But I thought it would be a good idea to start collecting money. Start focusing on earning money. Because actually, medical science is now going so fast that within my lifetime, I could, if I have money, maybe get treatment that would prolong my life almost indefinitely and uh, but you need money it's only the richest people like in Silicon Valley and the big company people that can afford these new techniques in the beginning but I would like to focus on 
basically taking better care of my money so I can um, get the best treatments. One of the good examples is my hip, hip uh, my hip uh, surgery now. I wonder uh, uh, anterior approach frontal but in Norwegian hospital which is we have universal health care in Norway they do not use the latest techniques on the hospital they do actually do it in a different hospital so I'm gonna get it next time but uh, if I had money enough money to I could actually pay for it and would actually get much better treatment much better the latest type of prosthesis that is dual mobility and I would get uh, stuff like that and, and I mean if you can get to some money and you can actually get the best treatment if you get sick that would be worth it actually so because the reason why I think is I have so many paintings to do so much to do before I die that if I get cancer or something it would be a good thing to have the money to get the absolute best treatment because in Norway they are usually not using the latest treatment and they are calculating with your life in a way how much time will this give this person so they might not give you the last types of uh, of treatment because it's too expensive for the states because of the universal healthcare thing and also because there's a lot of unhealthy people who basically are stealing all the money so I mean I, I needed a hip replacement because I ruined my hips with too much training so I mean yeah. Blah blah blah. Anyway, it was 15 minutes of me ranting when I was using the, the palette. So I'm gonna stop now ranting. Paint a little bit, I'm gonna show you the painting again. Okay, see ya. Yep, as you can see, I have worked a little bit with it and uh, it's getting better. Uh, what I do now is that what can happen when you are using oil paint is that you can at some point get a feeling that is too oily. And what I do then is to just keep going all over the surfaces like this, uh, back and forth a lot, and I just add more and more micro, I would say micro texture. It's like a, almost like I'm pushing more paint into the oily medium that are there already and it becomes more and more dry uh, and it also get this it gets this uh, uh, very nice um, if you look at Rich, Richter he is a painter that's very good with this uh, surfaces where everything glides into one another um, and uh, when you work wet and wet for a long time you more just push more and more paint without if I now took some some medium and did like this you see it becomes very oily and fluid again and it kind of ruins that beautiful texture 
becomes very oily. Uh, so now I have to kind of put push more and more paint into that surface. So I don't, what also happens is that it dries quite fast because you get a lot of uh, you you do get some medium into the paint that way and you mix the paint on the canvas and all kinds of stuff what I will do is to put in some some details in the end actually there are some there's kind of a wooden it's not kind of it is a wooden surface it is actually mahogany I found it I found these uh, mahogany uh, things so um, got my framer to make some stuff from them too um, I found them in a container or beside a container it's very expensive materials actually wonder what why they threw it away, it's like crazy anyway so and now the same thing here to get this uh, I will kind of work with these surfaces until they more and more glide into one another without losing that contrast. Now you see how I work now with a very small pencil and, uh, and let, next time we can even do it now I can go over these surfaces so we can get this this one to dissolve a little bit and I will add more texture in the foreground so that the contrasts between the levels the painting the paint itself are on also gives a, a greater sculptural reality because we do see things that are close clear and therefore it has to have a, a greater physical presence in in the paint not just in the illusion in, in the light and dark but also in the physical paint that is why I always say that a painting is actually a sculpture and uh, you should think as you are making a sculpture um, or a relief and my neighbor upstairs is starting to make his noise there's a store upstairs this old Pakistani guy and he works like crazy every day starts in the morning he's rolling around with his stuff up there driving me nuts he's a very nice guy and uh, you know I scratch his back and he scratched my back you can hear that sound it's crazy very annoying if you want to sleep or something Decoration, but you see now I just keep on building this and I will get closer and closer and closer every time I touch it. Actually, I could need some, some uh, raw sienna right here, it's kind of a yellowish color, but then it comes from th this is a glass. It is a glass plate, you know, glass thing. 
and underneath it, it is a wooden thing that are kind of yellow brownish, quite old. So it's that it's that color you see coming through here, and gives it that yellowish color. So yeah. Actually, the brick itself is quite dark. I tend to overdo the colors. I tend to make red redder, green greener. Uh, I, it's just the way I am. I guess it's how I am in everything I do. It's saturating. So, that is why my paintings tend to be quite vivid. I just can't manage to hold back. I even, I even try to hold back because if it was up to me, I, it is up to me, that's the wrong thing to say. If I let my demons loose, I would just push paint into it until it was um, too vivid until uh, the subtle thing was ruined, totally ruined. And I'm more interested in subtlety and um, quick fixes because it's easy to push in a lot of paint and um, convince everybody that it's so great because it's so painted. Uh, yeah. Suddenly my foot hurt. I didn't move it for a while. I can. It's not not the operator foot actually. It's the other one. So it's quite funny. Today it's actually seven weeks since my hip hip operation, and it is basically as if I never had one. An operation. I can feel up. I can't kick that I can't do because it's too much damage. But I'm gonna start rebuilding on every level, and I hope that I will be both strong and flexible again quite soon so I can start living again the way I want to okay. but now I think I need to rest and uh, yeah. So nice because I just start to get these surfaces to kind of link a little bit together. I go deeper and deeper and deeper with it. That is when it gets interesting when you really get to the point where you can start doing small stuff that enhances everything. So, but I'm not going to do that now. Okay. See ya. Yay. Okay. I'm still now working on uh, detail in the stone, trying to get some sweet details in. 
and so time consuming. Uh, it's, it's the thing that you feel that you're never going to be able to finish. The time when everything slows down to a walking pace. Not walking, but even sleeping. Just try to get some stone feel to it. It's actually the last thing I do. I worked up to it all the time, of course, but it is actually in the end you start doing this. You see, it's quite thin, it's not thick colors, it's just to give it a little bit of um, life and texture. Um, it's very easy to get lost and start adding too much. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Some lights here. So it doesn't seem to... You don't want it to seem like a hole. You want it to have some substance. Uh, and you want there to be something uh, in the shadows. Has to be something in there, you can't just pour on a lot of black or shadows without there being something in there. Uh, because usually uh, you see the things that are in the shadows. You see that people that haven't been working so long with painting tend to do these mistakes that they or on way too much shadow, usually using black, and uh, it just it feels like a hole. There's it's, it's no life in it, and, uh, so it's important to <coughs> have these things in your mind when you paint. That you want it to stay alive, have some address. So it's no walk in a park, even these small paintings, the patron giveaway, takes a very long time and I actually get almost double the price for them in a gallery in Norway than I get on Patreon. So the lucky patron who wins this painting should be happy. Because he gets a lot for his money. Mm. <clears throat> I also went a little bit up in size because I think it's better to work with um, bigger canvas. It's kind of more to, um, it doesn't get that crowded in a way. But I might also go down in size because some patrons has peeled out and, uh, and as my patron grow I will grow the paintings and uh, yeah. This goes very slowly anyway so it's going to take a while. Anyway, I as you see, I'm just try to get these sweets. Now I'm actually thinking much more when I'm using the palette. I'm trying to figure out how to find the right hues and the right colors. Since I also filmed my my um, palette. In the beginning, I didn't want to do that even now because now I'm in that 
end game, which is the most demanding. You can see how slow I actually use the power. I think it's getting quite starting to light up a little bit. I'm gonna do some natural sized um, bricks that done. Actually, I have no video. I painted so many bricks, you know, life size, but I haven't done any videos of it. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to start on a self-portrait. I had a request about that. I think it would be a good idea to paint a few self-portraits every year. I'm not getting any younger, and you can look at it as a selfie in a way. And it's good training. Might also start doing some live model. I'm gonna show you. Let's see how it turns out. So and when my second hip is fixed, uh, 13 of of um, August actually. It's a month. Is it to be a month until I get that done? I think I'm gonna to be totally pain free after a couple of weeks, and, and uh, I'll really get my energy back. And I'm really looking forward to that. Being able to stand around painting for 12 hours, 10 hours without stiffness and pain. So that's going to be good. And for now, I'm going to start streaming on YouTube. Maybe that's a good idea. Talk to my, to my fans. I have a few. It's not many. But I know there are some people coming back and watching my videos. That's nice. I guess my videos are so long and I talk so much that some, for some people it is just tiresome to listen to all this babble and uh, they go elsewhere to learn. And that is fine. But you're missing my honesty and directness and uh, unpretentious, non bullshit videos. <laughs> now, the funny thing with this is, as I've said in other videos, that underneath this glass, there's a glass plate here, and underneath there is some. Um, this more orange, brownish, orange tree, kind of old wood, and uh, it shines through. And that is why the color in the brick isn't that represented in this. This has a little bit different hue because it's the uh, thing underneath actually that gives that. Is the color. So if you wondered about that, that is the reason. And, yeah. I think I'm going to fill my pal uh, palette a little bit now so you can actually see what I'm doing with my palette. Maybe that is more interesting for some of you to get some. I'm going to put this video into segments um, and I have some pause between every uh, I might also I saw that it was able to actually 
uh, post links to the different segments in the video in the description. I'm going to try to figure out how to do that so you can actually jump to the different segments. Like when I do the palette, you can jump to that, and when I do the sketching, you can jump directly to that without having to browse through the video with. Um, Yeah, you know, the mouse or something. Uh, also, if I start writing about life, love and everything, you could actually write in description to the segment what I'm talking about. Maybe I should do topic videos, where I do topics. Every segment has its own topic. That could also be a good idea. I thought maybe if I start earning more, I could actually start doing better videos. Uh, more interesting. More flash. <laughs> so stupid. It's not me actually. I, I, I'm kind of a straight out person that I don't like all this flashy bullshit. I just want things to be real. I want life to be real and I want my want painting to be real and you don't need all this fancy fancy shit for video to be interesting I think anyway but it's easier to capture people's attention if you do all that fancy stuff so Yeah, I'm gonna film the palette so you can actually see what I'm doing. I think it's starting to become quite nice now, but I have some three or four hours more with with um, uh, detail left. So see what. Okay, here we go again. I'll now try to finish up this darling today. Uh, I'm gonna just use some light glazure I just put on the on the Retouche uh, Venice, oui, oui. And, uh, I'm gonna have some glaze just to get some textures in and some colors into it. You see how it falls into the cracks, so it's nice. Maybe I should do a little bit like this, yeah. And uh, some shadows here, more light on top. It's quite difficult this uh, thing because. Uh, It's quite white, it's quite dark in the background. Uh, I think I want to change some of my lighting in here because it comes a little bit too brutal. So I might do something with the lighting soon. Get it more spread out and uh, maybe even some more daylight. Uh, fluorescence lights. It's basically because when I film, it's better to have a little bit more light. Um, Actually, I, I think I'm going to do different types of lighting in the roof here because I can actually work against that wall. I can work against that wall. I can actually work a lot of different places. I hope I'm not in the way when I'm filming. I wish I could know, actually. Well, 
see what happens. I'm trying to stay on the distance today. My eyesight is actually quite well, which means that my blood sugar is fine. That's a good thing. Um, let's do something about that. Now, I will try today, as I said, to finish it. And it will probably take a few hours. It's funny because I've been, actually I have two I want to finish today, but probably I'm only going to manage to do one. And it's quite funny because I'm kind of walked around and almost like I'm getting ready for a fight. And you know, I remember when I I used to do karate matches and uh, even when I'm going to do some taekwondo or some boxing with my, my taekwondo master you know, I know it's going to hurt and, uh, a little bit anyway and um, before you go into the battle kind of have to walk around a little bit and get ready and it's kind of the same feeling I get when I'm going to finish a painting it's like I have to build up to the courage of going into it because I'm not always afraid to screwed up so it is this thing with too little and too much which I never get used to trying to more actually manage to control then again it's a part of the game so I actually think I need my glasses. I'm totally my eyes are totally good yet. This is the spot which is has the most light and of course the cooch. I'm just gonna try to enhance that. It is funny becoming, starting to understand that I'm pretty sure that Rembrandt's starting to lose his eyesight and that was why he is, one or some of the reasons anyway, why his paintings become more and more uh, kind of dissolved in the brush strokes and stuff because he couldn't really see all the detail. That's my hypothesis anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. It's funny thinking about Rembrandt a few hundred years ago walking around doing his painting living his life and now it's my turn to be here in existence to ponder the meaning of life and everything it's funny how it is Some exhibitions for me 
last weekend and we had some wine and a nice guy he knows what he's doing but I have like maybe two bottles of wine the whole evening and I was severely depressed the whole week not the whole not the, the same day but the whole started on Monday with feeling tired then on Tuesday I was still feeling tired I'm trying to rebuild by exercising and stuff and it just brings me down Wednesday I was just really depressed and Thursday the same totally shit totally panic and Friday was bad I went out and met a friend had some salmon some food and had a chat and talk and then Saturday I started to feel good again and today's okay well, not all good but fine and I just I don't drink very often and I just realized that I just can't do it anymore uh, uh, my psyche just has always alcohol has always affected me really badly but now it is even worse and when you don't drink often you can actually feel the extreme difference between not having been drinking and you have been sober for a long time and you have exercised and built yourself up physically and then burst bang you're down in the dirt again and I just realized that I'm I'm quitting I'm just leaving alcohol behind to never be hung over again uh, it sounds like a really good idea I don't know why I talk about that but the point is that if you're a young artist especially if you're a young artist please don't don't waste 10 years on being hung over the last 20 Five years, I probably wasted ten of them by feeling like shit because we were partying too much. So don't do that mistake. Focus on your painting. Focus on your art. It's almost like shooting yourself in the foot over and over again and not understanding why the hell it hurts. And uh, it's just ridiculous. So that's my conclusion. Just quit. I think I want to make one of my big think videos about my history with all kinds of addictions and how it is to actually live the artist's life with a artist brain. And then I can focus on my painting when I <laughs> make my videos. You see what I'm doing now? I just adding light, adding texture. Just I'm trying to be calm and trying to calm down so I can actually get some control over the surfaces so I don't overdo it. Now the background here is very is a very big distinction between the background and the, and the, the thing here, and uh, that's always difficult because the contrast can become a little bit too big. So I might want to go in here and enhance it up a little bit more. I'm not sure, but I might do that. And that's the problem because if I, if I do that, I'm gonna spend a lot of more, lot more time on it. 
my plan is actually to be able to finish this darning today, tonight. Actually, it's night time. It's like 3 in the morning. That's fine. That's my usual schedule. I want to do some bigger bricks, really work myself into them, and uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. A series of different object paintings, and I have a lot of plans. Again, being hungover for a week just to be social for a few hours it's just not worth it it's almost like a crutch in a way you 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 just you're gonna meet a new person and you just okay I'll have a stuff your glasses and you just go bam hmm. Hmm. Let's do something about that. But I definitely need my glasses. So I'll get them. And, uh, paint some more and film some more later. So, how was that? Is that good? You see now? Want me to come closer like this? Yeah. Okay. Just gonna do some detail work. You see the small pencil I'm using? It's very tiny. I'm using some black to damp it down and bring it up and down and stuff. You see I don't I never use black directly. Maybe in the most depth of the shadows I can use some black but I also usually put in some uh, uh, some uh, Alsorine and uh, French Ultramarine because if not uh, it becomes quite dead uh, so what you will do is if I do a shadow I do like this I do like this and pick up here and maybe some more and um, and if you wanna wanna bring it up to a certain hue you can also put in some more red or yellow so what but if you put in yellow they will change to greenish and stuff like that so you wanna be sure you get the right color um, yeah basically put in the shadows I'm going to have here I just want to maybe bring them up a little bit into the because of the color of the thing that comes from underneath I'm actually putting this underneath the brick now and I saw now that it was a little bit too much like a black hole Actually, it is a lot of contrast there, but I think I want to bring it up a little bit and give it some, some, um, yeah, so you see there's something there. I can't really see much of what's in there, but I, I want to give it that anyway, because it became a little bit too black. So I bring it up again, we're putting in some of that color I use around it and uh, it kind of gives it more life even in the shadow so yeah so now you know I'm gonna do some loops beside it you know right up close to the break I want to bring it up a little bit 
Maybe I should have done that. It was a guy who asked me if I could actually, oh, he actually asked if I could uh, have the motif up in one corner while I was painting. And that could be a good idea. Not that I understand why. Uh, yeah, I, it's not, I'm not that slavish when it comes to the... I try to I try to make a portrait of the object that I'm actually painting. I do that, but I'm not a photorealist, so I don't have that thing. I'm way too much of a impressionist or expressionist as a person to be able to be a photorealist. I also don't have that skill set. To me, painting was just something that I kind of evolved by basically failing and looking at the great masters. I didn't, nobody thought of me how to paint. I did that job myself and I don't even, still don't know if I actually know how to paint. It's very difficult to Judge one's own work. I can only hear what people are saying. It's almost like judging if you are judging yourself if you're good or good in bed or not, and it's it's, it's not your it's not up to you to, to judge it in a way. So you just have to listen to some of the feedback. I have actually one big advantage. I can actually go and see the great masters. Uh, hard to find a great master in porn uh, because it's so fake. Unless it's amateur porn. I've actually seen amateur porn and I'm quite hmm, yeah, this guy, this girl knows how to fuck. Hmm. But that's a digression. The point was that it's hard to judge your own work. So let me stick to that point and rant off in a tirade about pornography and its pitfalls. Um, yeah. That's the thing with me, you never know where my monologues is going to wind up. And there's a reason for that. I don't know where my monologues are going to wind up. No idea. You see how slow I work now? It's just touching, feeling, going back and forth. Give it more texture. I should have actually had the painting. I should have two cameras now. One on the palette and one on the painting. That would be brilliant. I'm gonna, I have actually did another camera. I'm gonna try to do some, maybe a couple of videos with that when I film both at the same time. Because I can actually get them together in in the video program I'm using so you can actually see real time how I'm using my, the palette uh, I just turn off the sound on one of them yeah I, I'm gonna do that for you yeah. this it's, it's it's a good thing that I film these things I might also I have some people who is going to start working for me 
and they have a professional video makers so I might start they might start making more professional videos and I have so much material so they can just use to make better stuff so yeah I also wonder about maybe when I do the when I do the uh, fast forward versions, the uh, time lapse versions of my videos. That you just sit down and explain what I'm doing in the painting. I might be more interesting for you to me explaining the process, talking about painting instead of music. Uh, YouTube has a very limited vocabulary of music you can use if you want to do longer time lapse videos. Basically, Beethoven Ninth Symphony and a couple of others that are like 16 minutes. But I would like to do time lapse videos that may maybe. Uh, a bit longer and I can actually make the uh, make the sound myself and also slow them down a little bit so they just go ramming through like crazy so there's a lot of stuff I'm gonna do I'm trying to build my YouTube channel so it attracts more people. You know, you can actually see other people are making a basically a living from it. So that would be done to earn some more revenue. So yeah, and it's nice to know that people get something out of my videos. It's more important to me than you actually know when you comment and tell me that you you got something out of it. it really, really warms, you know, to know that I can affect a person that I don't know far away with making these videos and giving uh, at least the knowledge that I have accumulated over many, many years and all the mistakes I've done and um, yeah. so hmm. yeah that's not so bad anyway uh, there was enough palette for now hope you got something out of it you see how I work I just use this one now. I could actually, if I was actually gonna do some um, some painting on the brick, you know, the brick itself, I will do use this one. It's a flat pencil, and I will kind of mix colors here. That's the burnt umber. No, no, it's a burnt sienna. Sorry, and that's raw sienna. Uh, and there's a lot of that color in this thing. So I just put it on and then I go for direction. When I did the detail, I was just more touching and doing like that. When I do the, the more flat surface, I try to, I, I do use a flat pencil that gives kind of a flat uh, texture and brush strokes. To differentiate the different uh, textures and directions and all these things. Yeah. I mix colors both on the palette and on the painting. I do not really think when I do it, I just paint. And that is when flow occurs. And there's actually a very good uh, talk on TED called Flow 
uh, it's about flow and that you have to come to a certain certain skill set uh, level of skill until you can actually really get the benefits of deep deep flow because when it's too difficult for you and you have to struggle too much with finding the different the right colors and stuff uh, it will kind of keep you awake it will keep you in a state of uh, uh, awareness and you will only get to flow when you turn off many parts of your brain like the speech center that is why I never really get into flow deep flow when I'm making videos and that is sad really uh, that you don't see it when I'm in real flow because real flow then I just disappear and my painting becomes more fluent than you see on my videos you have maybe seen it in some of the ones where I use uh, science or music in the background where I just go all the way into flow and uh, so you can look at them but that is the close but even then I'm aware I kind of forget but I'm aware that there is a camera there I think if I start uh, start doing live stream I can actually manage to go deeper into flow and uh, Yeah, but then again, I won't be uh, able to answer questions on super chat or something like that. So that would be the negative thing about it. I, I would like to engage with you live. So see what happens. First, I have to finish some paintings anyway and get my hip fixed. So. I want to do it before after that. Okay, palette. You see, I set them up in kind of the rainbow. Here the blues and stuff. It's black. Uh, and uh, it's old hold. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Stay. Hey, <clears throat> I think I'm quite done now, actually, I have worked around it, I have dissolved this, I have done some, um, uh, put in some brush strokes in the front so I can pull it out and this, it will also keep this down, uh, it gets some, some kind of a, um, feeling of glass into it and it's kind of how it is you can't really see much of the things happening in um, brick in the in the glass you can hardly see where it ends. And I kind of like that the fuse. Oh, when you put stuff like that, because there are some um, spots of stuff, so I just kind of enhance that a little bit. And um, I get that illusion of glass. Just want to do a few. A few. Small adjustments. Also let it rest until tomorrow. So I get more. It's very important to get some kind of distance to it. Maybe put it away a couple of days and then you just take it out again. And then you decide if, if it's good enough because you can't really see it very objectively 
when you have been working for it on it for days and hours so, so because I'm quite stressed with it actually so I have a hard time seeing it neutrally um, so put it into the frame something and just leave it be for a while and then take it out and look at it and say oh no this is so bad that is how to go about that spots here clear out no. it's kind of a airy pencil Uh, small things you can do. I'm going to show you because you can see there are some on this, but it has to be very. It mustn't be dominating. I just uh, put in some tiny things here in a wooden thing behind me, behind there. Just a dud. You know, it just drives it a little bit in. But you don't want it to be... It's not going to be too bright, because then it will dominate. It's just going to be behind there. Very, very tiny. So light. Yeah. It's always difficult to find that sweet spot. Too much, too little. You can actually same fight. Every time it can be so exhausting. <laughs> oh, God. Light here. Mm, that was better. That was some blue. It's summertime and the colors are drying so fast. That's so annoying. I don't know if it's blue. I'm going to do this now, this when I risk everything, this when I get into a situation where I just want to touch it a little bit and then eight hours later I want to throw the thing out when yesterday's Socks. <laughs> so easy to fuck it up. Um, and that's also why it's very good for me to just put it away now. I might go in and do some glazing later. But nothing much. Just to enhance it a little bit. it up
This is the silence when I'm when I'm not filming. I go into this deep silence even if I have music on. I just get into the deep silence and such a lovely place to be. Oops. Hmm. Yeah. So. Been using this old map. <laughs> so tiny. I'm going to just sign it and I'm going to put it away and have a look at it in a couple of days and then decide if I can consider it finished. See, I usually just sign small paintings like this K I V. Because my name is so long, and it kind of, if I put this signature in the whole thing, it becomes so big, so it takes up so much space. So I'm just going to do a K, R, V, maybe a little bit. Totally wrong. I have to have it. See, even this is a fucking problem. I want to go dark. See now, small K. Okay. Oh. One more time, huh? K. 
Okay. it like this the 19 wasn't so nice Okay, cool. You know, I could probably do this for a very, very long time. <laughs> because there's always kind of more information. Always a thing you can move. A little bit closer. And that is also why you shouldn't do this kind of work. When you are tired, like I am now because you tend to start screwing things up. I can't really see straight at this point, so... It's so annoying that I need to use my glasses because they are kind of in the way So that's kind of a hurdle
See now I'm starting to this might come. That was better actually. Yeah, maybe that was better. A little bit up there. I'm going to let it rest and um, I will release it in a couple of days. I can't tell myself away from it. It's always a problem. Oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah, 
and here it is the finished painting so you can actually I want to show you some details it's very reddish uh, it's kind of interpreting the colors very reddish uh, but you can see the details how I am actually doing the painting the textures and over paints and everything it's very important to keep on working over and over and over until you start getting the feel of the different textures and constituency of the different uh, um, objects in the painting anyway thanks for watching remember go to patreon the link there support me with one dollar or five and you can win a painting like this for five dollars you can win a painting like this every month and uh, subscribe and uh, playlist another video i don't know what yet but you see okay stay cool until next time have fun live well